So hello and welcome back. And welcome back to myself as well, to our channel. First of all, I want to apologize for those of you who have been waiting for our weekly update. I know we are two weeks late for our week three up for our week three video. But we have been extremely busy and fortunately I have managed to record some material, but I absolutely could not find time for editing it and putting this video together before. So I guess if you are watching this video, you are probably interested to know how off-grid life feels or starting up off-grid life. And it probably comes as no surprise that sometimes life just gets so busy that there are so many more urgent projects that we need to work on that uh, editing YouTube videos is just not the priority number one. And that's exactly what happened to us. So if you want to know what we have done, Keep watching, I will tell you what we have done in the last two weeks. It has been extremely busy, extremely interesting. We have done a lot of work and we have got a lot of things done. So in the beginning of the third week on our off-grid homestead, my stepson Tim came back from the holiday with his grandparents. And he came back together with his grandfather Werner or Bruno's father who stayed with us for a week and helped us with some work. I mean, to be honest, he just worked from morning till evening, basically non-stop, and there was no way for us to even try to keep up with him. He was just digging or shoveling without any break in the 35 degree heat. I guess at older times, the people were just made from higher quality material. That's the only way how I, I can explain this phenomenon. So basically, thanks to grandfather Werner, we got done in one week more work than we had planned for over a month. First of all, we had around three tons of hardened mud around the well that needed to be replaced in order to not flow back to the well when the rain comes. We had tried to get a digger to remove it uh, but before the digger could even come, Werner had already single-handedly replaced all the mud. Another project that we had planned for the digger was to create a level space for our temporary home. But of course, Werner was able to convince Bruno that there is no need for a digger and they can easily do it by hand. And guess what? Of course, they did it. We also got delivered 4 cubic meters of gravel to make the platform for our temporary home more stable. So they just continued shoveling the gravel. Easy peasy for a 70 years old guy who hikes 50 kilometers per day with a heavy backpack and bicycles through the whole Europe. Just in between the larger projects, they also managed to fence in our well. We felt kind of uncomfortable with this uh, deep uncovered well and we didn't want any animals or people to fall in there. So we decided to just fence it in for now until we managed to come up with some more permanent solution. As the permaculture gurus would say, Good enough for now, safe enough to try. Meanwhile, I continued creating new garden beds by layering straw and compost and planting more seeds and transplanting the existing plants and taking care of everything that I had planted already and doing all the maintenance as well as getting ready for the next week's great project to build up our temporary home, which you will see very soon in our next video. So 
So now let me tell you a story of my greatest nightmare becoming true. This is our little ruin and we made our temporary kitchen inside our little ruin. And last night, uh, before, right before cooking dinner, <clears throat> I was taking water out from here and I saw a little snake right behind the water container entering the house. And I was freaked out, not very much, but I was a little bit scared because I'm super, super scared of the snakes. I think I have a little bit some paranoia about snakes. So I didn't feel like cooking last night after seeing the snake entering the house in the darkness. And I decided to cook in the car, in our, in our van, camper van. <clears throat> so for this morning, Bruno had uh, managed to kind of um, pacify me and I was able to enter the house again to make our morning coffee. Sorry for the mess here. Right now we have everything on the table. This is our temporary kitchen where I was cooking every day. And when we were making our coffee this morning, we recognized something in the corner. I'm coming closer. I hope you guys can see it. And what we found in the corner, guess what those are? Guess what those are? Uh, those are snake skins. And there is a bunch of them. There is like, I don't know, six, seven, eight snake skins here. Relatively small snakes, apparently. The same small as I saw them last night. But for me, this is an absolute nightmare. It means we have a whole nest of snakes living in our ruin somewhere. And I'm super scared of snakes. I really don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. Honestly, if we saw this picture, what I'm seeing here right now, before we bought this house, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't have bought it because I'm that much scared of the snakes. But I guess I have to overcome it or we have to find a solution how to replace them and somehow inspire them to live somewhere else. I really don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> 